The first presenter has been sharing his leadership knowledge with clubs around the world using the unfettered access to clubs granted to us by the internet. He's an author, inspirational speaker, and our immediate past district director. He was recognized in the Toastmasters International Hall of Fame for the 2018-19 year. Please help me welcome David Woodcock. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. We are in a pandemic. Eight months into my district director year, things changed. Things changed. Were we ready? No. Did we get ready? Yes. The team was able to pull together. For this presentation today, I hope you will take away, as Michael alluded to earlier, something that you can take back to your clubs about being a leader or leadership so that you can inspire your members to be the best that they can be. And in fact, that could be the next leader in your clubs. All right. Yes. Do you see my, I gotta share my screen. Here we go. Okay. Why is it not working? There we go. The objectives are today for today are your role as a leader. How can you leverage your strengths to help members? Recognize the leader in you. Meet challenges head on. And we're going to be talking about leadership. And a different view to get a different result. Now I want to bring forward our historic visionary and leader and founder of Toastmasters International, Dr. Ralph C. Smith. What is the story behind Toastmasters? No man knows it better than its founder, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley. Dr. Smedley. Toastmasters grew out of an effort to meet the needs of a group of men in Bloomington, Illinois, more than half a century ago. In those days, I was a YMCA secretary. Many of the men with whom I was associated in that work needed help in talking and in meeting other people. They had ideas, but they did not know how to express them. However, they did not want a formal class in public speaking. And when I suggested a club in which they could learn to talk by talking, they welcomed the idea. I believed in the sound pedagogical principles of learning by doing and improving through helpful suggestions or constructive criticism, as I preferred to call it. Businessmen, professional men, laboring men, men of a variety of occupations came into the club, and they were surprised by the results which they achieved through following our simple process of practice and criticism. We were strictly an educational group. We avoided the atmosphere of the classroom, and we learned in moments of enjoyment. As men in other communities heard of our plan, they desired the same training for themselves. It is gratifying as I look back over our development through the years to know that the growth has been the result of the desire of men to improve themselves in speech and in communication with other people. Yes, many thousands of men throughout the free world have profited by Toastmasters training 
and have been led into more productive living, more satisfactory living by this means. I hope to see many thousands more given the advantage of this training in the years to come. So how many of you have seen that particular video before? All right. And what did you think about that video? Certainly the ideal of having more members still holds true today. We still need our membership to drive the organization. And I believe this is why it's still an integral part of our Distinguished Club program. So in the beginning, Toastmasters International sent all of the leaders a, an email on March 9th. What it did is it gave us the decision on what was going to happen with members who are dealing with COVID-19. They had decided that they're going to suspend in-person meetings, which would be very different in the way we were conducting meetings. So we had to set a course of action. So your district leadership team knew that this could be, in fact, a new normal. It became very apparent that communication during this time was of the utmost importance. A little bit around the pandemic, we've all heard it's an outbreak of a disease occurring over a wide geographical area, typically affects a significant population. There's what it looks like if you have not seen it with the proteins. It's just made up of a, a bunch of proteins that attack our immune system, specifically uh, at, at the lungs. So what we needed to do is we had to learn more. And like the good Toastmasters we are, we always like to learn and keep learning. So the leadership team knew that before we can even talk intelligently about COVID and, and what we can do to help, we had to learn more. So we found out it was a virus how to protect ourselves and distancing, of course, is part of that. And now, of course, we've all heard about the vaccine, but the vaccine started over a year ago. And now we're in place to receive those vaccines. Hello, I am Richard Epeck your international president. I would like to extend my thoughts to all Toastmasters during this global pandemic. It is humbling to see the resolve our members have shown in recent months. By now, we have all either directly or indirectly been impacted by the coronavirus disease. Toastmasters clubs are not an exception. At the time I'm recording this message, 82% of our clubs worldwide have adapted to online meetings. That is an impressive number that is only achievable through the unwavering dedication of our members, club officers, and district leaders. We know this change has not been easy for all, and many look forward to the day where they can resume in-person meetings. However, Many of us have realized the new opportunities presented by this digital environment. This challenge has taught us how to facilitate online meetings and gain comfort with technology. While we may not be able to travel and visit clubs in foreign countries, we can attend online meetings and experience different cultures virtually. 
I hope we can be united in looking for the opportunity presented to us and that you feel well supported by the Toastmasters community. Stay safe, take care, and thank you so much for your continuing support. So I certainly recognize that this could be a situation where it could go on for quite a long time. So what the leadership team did is we had to develop a plan to stay connected. Now this took a little bit more work in the beginning because now we were communicating more to try to ensure that our members were confident that we were doing something about this and moving forward. We weren't going to allow the pandemic to stop our communication. In fact, I would suggest as a leadership team, it increased our resolve to communicate more, not only as we have stated in our district success plan, which you have also in your, uh, your club success plan, but we wanted to communicate that much more. So the direction from Toastmasters International was very clear and we had to make sure that we were on top of that to ensure that we would get the information out to the members, which was very, very important. So communication, teamwork on all levels. So that means the deck, the, uh, the deck team who's made up of the division directors, area directors, and to include then the executive of all the clubs. Technology. We took a survey to find out what online platforms were available, but also who in the clubs had that technology so they could use it and bring it forward to their members. You would have known at the time there was uh, WebEx was one of them as well as Zoom. Zoom was having issues with security, which they later did help and resolve, which was very good for all of us across the district because now if we had an online meeting we wouldn't have a let's say a zoom bomb happen where someone would just show up and wreak havoc in your meeting act this was very important we have to act all the time and prior to COVID-19 I want to bring up the fact that we had made a decision about contests well the contests, we didn't end up having contests because we didn't feel that we had enough information to carry forward, especially when it came to the platform for giving the speeches. What does that platform actually look like? The size of it and where we had to be in the screen so in order to have a successful message and competition. So what is a leader? I want to talk about leader and leaderships and leadership. A person who has commanding authority or influence, but empowers others to accomplish a personal goal and contribute to the successful completion of team objectives. So this is important that everyone has the opportunity to be a leader from the district right through to the club executive and the member. So I have a little humor here. She never thought she could become a leader until she slowly became one. Have a look at this. Sometimes becoming a leader just happens because you have a passion for something in your club or at the district level, you have a passion. So what happens? You see it through by all of a sudden now, you're taking the lead. You're taking the lead. And I hope today you will come to realize that you do have the leadership capabilities within you to step up to the front and be noticed. So who has influence? Who has influence? Let's have a show of hands. Who has influence in your clubs? Who has influence? If you have influence in your club, then you are 
on the verge and certainly potentially to be a leader. Because now you're helping those in your club to be better, to take on a path, to move forward. So I would suggest that how many leaders do we have in the district? Every one is a leader. Everyone. So that means you. You are a leader within your club. So that's every member of every club from the top down to the leadership team has potential. I remember back in 2017 at a TLI, there was a panel set up and I remember this panel distinctly. Uh, I know Eli Lapiard was part of it, Monique Levesque Farrell. And I asked the question, how do you know it's your time? And what I was asking is your time to be a leader, and certainly at this time it was at the district level. The response was, you will know. You will know. And if you know Michael Notario, Notaro and read his book, you would know that certainly your time is within you and you know when to step up. His book is called The Call of the Leader. If you get a chance to read it, please do so. So every club executive member is a leader. Every supporting district team leader is a leader. So what leader character traits do you have? Or what do you think the leadership traits are for good leaders? I want you to write this now in the chat and I'm gonna call on Cheryl and Glenn Wark to please relay what is being said in the chat. So give me an example of one character trait. Putting Others First by David Story. Okay. Passion by Susan. Vision by Stephen Clark. Uh, good listener from Janet Pigeon. Take on responsibilities and accountability for the results by Helen. Friendly. Yes. Empathy from Maria. Assertive from Patrick. Good listener from Shelley. Encourage wow. from Anne Marie. It goes on and on, David. On and on. Yeah. <laughs> very, very, very good. I, I'm getting the response certainly that I would ho I was hoping that you, because you're a leader, you know what some of the traits are. Let's I have a list here. I'll just go through very quickly. Come up, please. I did practice this, everyone. Ah, here we go. So in a COVID world, we have to be flexible and open-minded because things are gonna be coming at us, coming at us, coming at us. And we have to be ready to be able to deal with those that are coming at us. Certainly at this time of COVID, we just got back actually from our mid-year training for the leadership team. And following that, we had our audit. Now these, these are not something that are different, but leading up to COVID and then having COVID, we really had to be open-minded to go, okay, things are gonna change. And we have to be flexible to meet those changes. We have to be more compassionate, more compassionate. Why? Because we have people that may not want to be part of this new model, if you will, of moving forward. You have to be passionate. Still have that passion within you to share and to be available, to be vulnerable, so you can help those around you. You have to be engaging. Still need to be engaging. You have to be honest. Honest with yourself, honest with those that you are leading. You have to be genuine. Now, I know a lot of these are very close and similar traits but they all have a part to play. You have to be knowledgeable, certainly being in tune with what's happening in the world, but also with Toastmasters International because they are our body by which we need to follow and to answer to. 
So any information that they get from them, then we pass it on. Being humble, this is huge. This is huge. And what I mean by being humble is that you, you can't do it all. So if you don't have an answer, ask. You're not expected to know everything. You have to be committed. Now, in a COVID world, if you say you're going to do something, you, you have to do it because people are going to be waiting on a response from you. You have to be confident, sincere, focused, goal-oriented, optimistic that things will change and things will get better, but you're going to drive the change. Accountable. I saw this in the chat and I saw many of these in the chat, which is very good. Communicative, persistent, and look at this last one. I feel this is very important. Self-care. What does this mean? It means that you're, if you're in a good place and you're healthy and you're willing to put yourself forward 100%, then you're going to make a difference and you're going to help members and you're going to help your teams. So self-care is critically, critically important because if you're in a place where you're not good or not well, then for you to help others can be that much more difficult. I, I won't say that you can't do it, but it just makes it that much more difficult. So what a leader does, and I alluded to this earlier, the leader acts. So there are opportunities, certainly throughout COVID, where we had to act. And I already mentioned one of them about the contest. We decided that we weren't going to have a contest. And, and that was difficult. We were only one of a few districts throughout the world that didn't have contests. But we didn't feel we were ready. And it's not because of a lack of trying on our part. We just didn't feel that we had enough direction to allow the, the contest to go ahead smoothly. So we ended up canceling them. This year, I'm so happy that they are back and the leadership team is working hard to bring that forward too as well. Right on from, of course, the leadership team, division directors, area directors, down to the clubs, which is actually going to start very soon in around mid-March. Engages and gets, persuades and buy-in. So during a pandemic, getting buy-in may be one of the most difficult things that you do. And we're seeing it throughout the district. Our memberships are down, but so is membership throughout the world. So what does that mean? Are we not reaching those that are needed to keep our club sustainable? What, what is happening? And I'm going to offer some tips a little bit later on about what we can do there. We have to build teams. It's even stronger now that teams are really, really important and strong teams. When I was building my team as district director, I was building a team based on not what I was good in, but based on what my weaknesses were. Because what that does is that rounds out the team, but it also ensures that nothing falls between the cracks. Because if I'm not good, let's say in finance, What's the best thing I can do for my members? Yet someone that is very strong in finance. Right? So that's what you do in your teams. You, do, you should be doing the same sorts of things. Because what it does also, it empowers someone else. It gives them the power to help create something different, something new, something better. So building teams during the pandemic was especially important. And I will mention about another team that took over when it came to the technology in. Now there were those in the district that certainly helped out in this avenue when it came to surveying, when it came to making sure that those that were online were available to be online to connect with either Zoom, WebEx or whatever in the beginning what we needed to do. Certainly, we've all come to realize that Zoom is the most important for us to reach as many of our members. 
empower others. I mentioned this. Certainly have to empower others because it's not about you leading all the time. It's about you allowing or giving the power to someone else to lead. So that's what leadership is. Leadership is about empowering others to lead. And you act as a guide. Certainly if there's lots of questions that come up, you want to ensure that you're guiding and helping and giving that little push to ensure that they keep going. Because sometimes when we reach challenges, we stop. Some people just, it becomes over overbearing to them. So if we just give them a little nudge, maybe that's all they need to continue. A sense of community. Wow, have we, in the district since the pandemic, I've seen this stronger than ever. We have become a much stronger community. Why? Because of we act, we engage, we build teams, we empower others, and we guide. We're helping people be better. And we're transparent. As I mentioned, any information that I got in the district director role, and even throughout my entire tenure as a Toastmaster, I'm willing to ensure that everybody knows about it. Because what good is information if you don't pass it along? And to ensure that everybody's on the same page as much as possible. And that was never more true than early on in our journey, if you will, our new normal in the pandemic. Flexible, I mentioned this, it's really about pivoting. It's really about pivoting. It's saying, okay, this is the way we gotta go now. This is our ship. Okay, we gotta, we, we're navigating and moving through together. I want you to watch this video and please tell me what of a leader or leadership do you see when it comes to this particular video. Now you can either write it in the chat, and I see the chat is coming up quite a bit here. Sorry, I haven't been watching it as closely, but I do have two monitors. It helped. All right, so here we go. And if you could please either write it in the chat or maybe just put your hand up and we'll, one of my monitors will recognize and give you the floor. This is nothing compared to the twig of 93. That's it, that's it. Good! You're doing great! There you go, there you go! Watch my eyes, don't look away. And here's the line again. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Mr. Soil. <laughs> Good job, everybody! Oh my, there's quite a gap, Mr. Soil. Shouldn't we tell the Queen? I don't think we need to involve the Queen in this. She's got enough on her plate already. Trading her daughter. Oh, yes, Princess Ada, the poor dear. All right. All right. I close this down. Janet has her hand up. All right. Go ahead, Janet. 
Unmute, Janet. I'm trying there. <laughs> okay, they were each carrying their own load. Um, when they were lost, someone took charge. Uh, the challenge, uh, someone came up with a solution to the challenge, and then they got praise. Very good. That's, that's exactly what happened. Did you notice anything about what they were, how they were moving in the line and what they were doing at the end of that line? Yes, leadership, I, I am having a look at the chat. Leadership, guidance, teamwork, absolutely. But what they were doing also is taking something from somewhere and putting it somewhere else. So they were building like a stockpile of food for later on. So that's actually important too, right? Because now what's happening is that they recognize, yes, community. Thank you, Maria. So what that actually means now is that they were building something bigger and better for something down the road for the future so they were saving food for later on as leaders we also we also do that and should be looking ahead to making sure that we keep our members sustained and engaged and interested in our program all right so very good Let's go back to you, share the screen. While you're doing that, I just want to throw in Don Wood said, yeah, but COVID's a really big leaf. Don, you're a funny man. You should have made that public, not just to me. Ah, very, very good point. And it actually is. COVID is a huge leaf that's got in the way, potentially, from our development. And we are seeing a ripple effect throughout certainly my tenure as district director, but also through Laverne's at this moment, that you know membership is down and we have to work that much harder to ensure that we come around to getting those members back or bringing new members in. There's an opportunity here to get new members throughout anywhere in the world. I wanna go now to the participation part, certainly I thank you for your participation so far in this presentation. But now I want to call on our 10 that are volunteers that have said that they will participate in this next segment. And what this segment is, is I'll just share the screen just for a second, and then I'm going to stop sharing it. Build the story. Mm. The first person begins with a story with one complete sentence, and then the next person completes the sentence and adds another incomplete sentence. So an example here, Peter was asked by his mom to go to the corner store. On the way, Peter, and then the next person carries on the story. So our 10 people today, please help me with this, uh, Cheryl and Glenn, that are going to take the screen and start the story. So Lloyd, can you help me with this, please, to have those that are speaking to take control of the floor. Can I share uh, the list? On the uh, yes. Okay. okay. Okay, I'm taking over with that then. All right, here's the list. Very good. In order they signed up. The order they signed up. Okay, Del, you want to start us off. Now, what I would like to do is to have it relevant. So in other words, something about maybe it's a Toastmasters, something about a member, but not specifics that we can learn with respect to being a leader or leadership, which is our next segment. Dell. Nobody in Dell's chair. Oh. Maybe the second one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do we want to go to Chris, Cheryl? Unmute. Why not? Start at number two and then go back to Dell when he shows up again. 
All right. Yeah, turn on your screens, all, all uh, 10 of you, if you wouldn't mind. How long are they speaking, David? I can spotlight them when they start oh. speaking. And... Oh. Yeah, two, up, uh, two minutes max. Okay. One, one to two, but yeah. Oh. Actually less, probably just one. Uh, two minutes is a little long. Yeah. Well. Is Chris there? Yeah, I'm here. I just was, um, I'm trying to get my screen can you see and hear me yes yes hi there my name is chris damon and i guess i'll start this off you know i've uh, joined toastmasters probably maybe two years ago and and uh thought um right now i'm an area director and and back to what david's been talking about uh, how the COVID has affected these duties and how important the leadership roles are for us to keep everybody um, everybody on the same line, like we saw the ants, right? And, and being uh, calm and, and like that leadership ant, he's calm and, and gets people going around the leaf, the COVID leaf and keeps on going. So the, the future challenges coming up after this TLI and how we embrace things will be so important. I leave it. Leadership for me in Toastmasters is an opportunity to fail. I'm happiest when I fail because Michael. Yes, I'm happiest when I fail when I I actually forget about what I was speaking about because next time I learn more about focusing. And that's really important. Ralph McQueen. Or Maria. <laughs> hey, I was a little thrown off now because I was expecting someone else to answer. Okay. Um, Mike, can you just tell me exactly what your last words were, if you don't mind? Uh -oh. Michael? It was about focusing. Oh. I'm sorry about that. I was on mute. Didn't realize. Okay. So basically, foc he did it on okay. folks. Basically, focusing allows you to, to be able to target what, you're, what you want to say and to be able to uh, go on, you know, present a clear message. In giving mess in giving the messages probably some of the hardest types of messages to, to focus on are Maria. Okay. The hardest messages to focus on. Okay. Well, I think sometimes it's getting to know each person a little deeper. Like I believe that if you're a leader in the club, you should get to know each individual a little more and uh, focus on their goals, what they expect from Toastmasters. Um, you also have to be sincere with them and uh, at the same time, help them to build confidence in themselves that they're able to accomplish those goals at Toastmasters. I'll leave it to Emily. Thank you, Maria. Yes, the job of a leader is to grow more leaders. I believe in that. And that's how a person grows. And that's what David was saying. All the characteristics of a good leader, as he mentioned, is actually leading to members to grow and be a better leader. And we all need to ponder what are the things that we need to do to our members, either in Toastmasters in the community or even in our family to be a better leaders. So I'll go to Brendan to say, what are the steps that you need to do to be a better, to grow that person as a leader? You're muted. Um, there. Thank you, Emily. 
what are the steps you need to do? That really puts me on the spot because I, I would have to go back to my textbooks to find that exact uh, formula. But, but what I do know off the top of my head is being a good listener is so important and being able to allow people to communicate and, sh and gain information from a variety of people. I think through this whole COVID experience, we've learned that information is so important and we've seen where there's gaps in information and it's come through loud and clear where those gaps are. So this is an opportunity for us to gain information, reflect on that information and find opportunities to put that information into practice and to make changes that are gonna support people, make people feel that they've been heard, um, encourage people to continue to be proactive and involved. And it's gonna, it's, the gains are gonna be absolutely massive. It's, it's, I think there's gonna be real positive changes that we're gonna see. And I'm grateful for Toastmasters for all the learning I've, I've, I've received and the opportunities that I've experienced to grow to take my personal life, to take my professional life, to take my life now, blend that all together and find new ways of doing things. Toastmasters has brought so many opportunities to the forefront and it is gonna to continue to help people to grow. There's no doubt about it. So Jack, my question to you is, what growth have you seen? David has uh, very much outlined the qualities and the things that a leader needs to be and to do. And what we need then is to have a leader that has their own personal vision for the future and to draw on their knowledge and personal experience and to get a collective uh, membership to enact and seek out that uh, the end goal that he has in mind and make these things and these changes happen. And as I, uh, I guess what we would then uh, conclude with would be Connie and her comments. Thank you, Jack. So then with the vision, the goals, the knowledge that we all have, the way to have the clubs succeed is to encourage them, encourage the members, give them positive feedback, help them to grow speech after speech. And through that, the goals will be achieved and having that team that you develop from the club executive and with all the members in the club, everyone doing their part, that's how each member will grow. Oh. Del. Yes, uh, as far as growing is concerned, a lot of times when we're growing in terms of leadership, we end up, we find it, get it, uh, we have to be honest with people. We have to know that, uh, that what we're doing is, what we say we're going to do is we're going to do it. And that it's a part of integrity to, to know that uh, if you've got a business or you've got something that you're doing and the teams, they know that they can count on you. And I think that's what leadership is all about, is to know that there are those people there that they get to that point. Maybe it was like the, the woman who took a long time to get to that point where she was a leader. But the thing is that at, at the end, <clears throat> we realize you know, that we're at a point where we can actually say that we can help other people. But I think David mentioned the point of the fact is that we have to do it in a humble way. We don't say we don't have, we have to have a team that'll actually work with us to be able to grow it. And I think that's what we need in Toastmasters to be able to, to grow and to see us grow in this, particularly in this pandemic situation. Back to you, David.
All right, thank you very much for sharing, everyone. Very important of being able to share and give your opinion. A little bit different than what I envisioned here for this particular story, but nevertheless, very, very good information. Thank you all for volunteering and for sharing a little bit of your story with us today. Why it's delaying. There we go. So you would have all seen this at some point in your leadership journey. You're having a look here. I, I would like to add in here accountability, uh, but nevertheless, have a look at these traits of leadership. There are quite a few. So leadership is what? It's really about inspiring and motivating others to a common goal. It's the capacity to lead. And this is where I'm getting to the self-care. You have to have that self-care in order to have partly to be the, have a capacity to lead. And it's the act of leading. It's an act. It's something you do. Leadership isn't something that you sit back and allow others to do. Although in certain situations, that could be the case. And I will get to that in a little bit. So what makes leading the same or different? in a pandemic. Here's really the, some important points of today's presentation. What's same or better and what's different? So the message is the same. However, the impact can be different. The impact can be different. When we think about that, what does that really mean? So if you're saying that you know, again, getting back to contests, you're saying, oh, the district isn't going to have contests. But what's that impact? The impact could be that maybe some people are only in Toastmasters because they like to compete, right? So that now brings on a little bit of a different meaning for that particular member. But it also could mean your message has to be that much more clear. It also means that in-person interactions are not going to happen and they won't for some time in a foreseeable future, it means a communication has to be that much better and more clear. Because now you're not in the same room. It's they don't, your members may not get the nuances of what you're really trying to say, which is the nonverbal, right? The nonverbal, you can see it online, but in the room, it's that much more magnified. The opportunities. So the opportunities are greater because now you're going to learn something new and learn something new, technology, something new, and you're going to reach more people. What's different? Limitations. We have limitations. Maybe people don't want to come online. Maybe their technology of their computer or something doesn't allow them to connect, which will make a huge difference. That makes it difficult to have them maintain their membership to keep into clubs. Preparation, I would suggest, would be the same or even better. Because now that you're online, you have to be ready. You're ready, ready. Just like you would be in the room. A different, increased level of compassion. There has to be that compassion because you're connecting online. It's a different vibe. But when you do it, you feel it. You can still feel it. It is a little different, but you can still feel it. The leader traits are the same. Uncertainty. That's what's different. What's next? What's going to happen? When are we going to be out of this? The questions come forward. And as a leader, you may not have those answers. Toastmasters International is working hard to ensure that we have what we need moving forward. But there's still that level of uncertainty within the organization and it follows through all the way down to the clubs. The core values, we still have those. Integrity, respect, service, and excellence, we still have those. But we have now different, a new normal. And what I mean by this, when we resume, we could have in-person and online meetings, either alternate or during the same meeting. Now I'm gonna move on from the next two slides because it's really breaking down about what I've said already. And I know my time is coming as well. So here's humor. Great leaders are not born, they are made. But look at this, which explains why we have so many have, uh, why so many have a screw loose. 
Well, obviously they're saying made in a manufacturer sort of way, and the screw is loose in that piece of manufactured uh, piece. But nevertheless, great leaders are not born, they are made, of course. So leadership style. Just want to go through leadership style quickly. Like in Pathways Level 2, there's a decision-making and leadership uh, style exercise that you must do. And there are eight of them, right? If you remember, and I will recall here just very quickly, here's what they are. And what I found out mine were for this were the last three. Affiliative, coaching, altruistic. Which means, for me, I allow leaders to lead. I'm not one that steps in and just tries to take over everything. That's not what leadership is, in my view. Leadership is about allowing others to lead and fail because we learn from our failures, which we heard earlier on today. We certainly do learn from them. So allowing those to lead is most important. But if things start going off the rails, then you should be there to guide and to help. That is my leadership style. But you should know yours. What is yours? It's very important when you're dealing with your teams and dealing with members and dealing with executives that you know your style and others know your style. It became very clear in my district director year, Laverne and both uh, Alfred knew my style. They know, they knew how I like to communicate. And we worked with that together as a team. Sure, are you always gonna get along with your team all the time? And I'm not saying that we did because we did, but chances are you may run into something where you have a difference of opinion. It's your leadership style and your leader traits that'll help you to mend that. Fundamental principles. So here we go. In leadership, and again, uh, I'll, I'm not sure where I am with my time. If I could have that in the chat, can someone let me know my time? I've timed this presentation and I know where I should be at. But here we go. Be humble. The team is counting on you. And they really are. And they're watching you. That's the other thing that's important about leadership. Don't believe that you're not being watched. Because that's really what integrity is, right? So make sure, I'm just checking my time here now. Sorry, everyone. So they're counting on you. Listen and ask for advice when needed. You don't have to do things all on your own. If you need help, ask for help. If you're a president, ask other presidents in training or ask your area director, division director. Don't act like you know everything because you don't. I don't. I learned a heck of a lot, but I learned because I was open to learning. You have to be open. Treat people with respect because what it does is it builds trust. And you want to have trust in your clubs, your areas, divisions, and the district. Take ownership, accountability. Sure, is everything going to go the way you want? No. But if you're accountable and, as Dell said, do what you're going to do and make sure you follow through, that's accountability. Work hard. Don't take on a role if you're not going to work at it. Sure, life gets busy. And it did for all of us. And certainly early on in uh, the club growth director uh, year, in my year, you know, things were, we had to pick up the slack for one another a little bit. But it's not of anybody's doing. It's just sometimes things happen. So we have to work that much harder for the team because it is still about the team. Do the right thing, build relationships, and continue to build them. Be decisive. And what I mean by that is if you make a decision, if the team makes a decision, then certainly follow through with that and let everyone know what the response is. Finally, get the job done. We can't lose focus that we are here for a reason and we're here to help everyone to get better. But we do have targets and we try to meet those targets. Team, this is what it's about right here. Leadership, teamwork, breeds success. And it really, really does. So work together, meet the needs of each member, which is hard. It takes work. But I know everyone in our district, certainly the leaders, which 
most all of us are, if not all of us, right? Then we're meeting the needs of our members. We listen. Active listening. I know at training, we did take an active listening uh, segment of our training. And wow, did that ever bring out a lot of... Yeah, we don't listen how we should listen. And at some point, I hope the leadership team again brings that forward to do that exercise with you. Overcome the challenges. Certainly they're not easy. We overcame a lot and we're still overcoming them and trying to overcome them because of the pandemic. Seek help. You're not alone. So let's tie this in. So a crisis, an emotionally significant event or radical change or status, a decisive moment. So let me bring forward to you this thought. Clubs, areas, divisions. Pandemic is a crisis. So although today's talk was mostly around the pandemic, but I hope you're able to see the connection between a pandemic and a crisis that you have either in your club area or divisions. We do have low membership. Engagement can be challenged. We have certainly an interest in the program, the educational program. Maybe some are not happy with Pathways. But that's where we're going. We're going forward. We're not going back. So those that are not interested or happy with it, there is some persuasion that needs to happen, a buy-in, if you will. And that's what leaders do. That's what leaders do. They get buy-in. Life changes. People move, people change jobs, people get divorced, people, things happen. So you have to meet the people and your members where they are. And this is what I was getting about compassion. As a leader, you have to show the compassion for them. Because maybe somewhere down the road, when life gets a little bit easier, guess what happens? The Toastmasters program tugs at them. And the relationships they've built tugs at them to bring them back. Sometimes you have to ask them to come back, though, right? And this is why it's important to keep up on the list of those that were in your, in your clubs before. Technology challenges, there's always going to be this. And we have very competent people within our district who can help with the technology challenges. So call on them. Go through your area director. Go through your division director. And of course, then you need timely support. If you're asking something and it takes two weeks, a month to get an answer, unacceptable. Leaders are responsible and accountable to make sure they support the teams that they're working with. So what can you do? Be a leader. Be the leader that you know you can be. Choose to act, whatever that is, in your clubs, if it means doing an open house or doing something different. Try something different. Increase your online presence. And I know there's lots of resources out there. I know Michael Bear has been certainly helping us along when it comes to ensuring that we have that online presence. So that when somebody comes looking, you're ready and you're accepting of them. Use your influence. As a leader, use your influence. It's one of the most important tools that you have in your toolkit. Call on other leaders. Very important. If you don't know or you want some help, call on other leaders. Act as a leader. I have this little note that I've put up here now. It's act as a leader. Accept the need for change because that can be a hurdle. Right? But you know you have to pivot and move forward and be flexible. Change, make it happen. Make it happen. And then finally, be transformational. So set the course for something new. So if you're standing here and you're looking and you're going, this just isn't working. Try this. Oh, yeah, I didn't see that before. Or now you're in a position to say, I can see this. You have helped me to see this. So set the course for something new. Finally, I want to leave you with some final thoughts. 
We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Winston Churchill. My second final thought is this, and I know it's long, and to have this on a slide is, is difficult, but please have a look at this. To each there comes in their lifetime a special moment when they are figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered the chance to do something very special, unique to them and fitted to their talents. What a tragedy if that moment finds them unprepared or unqualified for that which could have been their finest hour. So be ready. Be the leader. When the door opens a small crack, knock it open and walk through that door. Finally, be a leader during this pandemic or crisis in your club for every member and for you. Mr. Chairman.